We started with 71 teams, and now the grand final is locked in for our very first, the debut of the Overwatch Open. 71 teams of six put their skills to the test, and now we have two that have risen to the top, the cream of the Overwatch crop, at least here in Europe. We've got ourselves two very different sides, and I'm looking forward to dissecting it with two very, very handsome men. I've got myself a DDK and a Jorasar to talk through. I am Alex Machine Richardson, your host, but the casters for this one and my analysts joining me as well are DDK and Jorasar. Uh, gentlemen, it's the grand final. We've got two. Uh, uh, would you agree with me when I say that we've got two different sides, Anox and Misfits? Uh, I've got this very different style of play, very different storylines into how they got here, climbing through the bracket, of course, starting round of 32. Now they battle for a spot in the playoffs. I'll tell you what that means in just a moment. But first, setting the scene. DDK, you had the opportunity to cast them, casted both of them. Who do you think uh, has the edge in this one, uh, the difference in play style? I was showing Alex videos of Kula and Cypher. <laughs> we just watched, break. <laughs> so just watched 15 so minutes of Quake Fragments. <laughs> history, history lessons going on there. And he's like, he loves the, the railgun. Do something, something quite special about the railgun. And actually, you know what? It's an interesting discussion. Uh, why not? Why don't we just jump into it, right? Do you think there are some? There, there is. You know similarities between Cipher and his in his efficiency with the rocket in Quake and picking up Farah. Do you think there is any sort of like? Well, it's a shame that Farah is not really. Hmm? Saying that Farah is not really. Not in the matter. I, I think if I think on. if Cipher picks up Farah now and then wins in the grand final by wrecking face just with yeah. Farah, then like getting these dir direct rocket hits. Greatest of all time, right? Yeah. If he does that now, I will worship. Yeah. That's it. Do you think there is any carryover? I don't mean. There well, for rockets, you mean, well, I mean, the thing the with rockets time. is that is, I mean, the skill there is obviously the prediction, and it's it's something that even with a huge amount of practice, it's hard to. It's always going to be difficult because your brain has to do a lot of stuff like very quickly, subconsciously, with lots. You need a lot of experience, and some people just have this knack, and he's one of those players. The thing is, though, again, Farah's not really all that used at the moment, so we'll have to see. Maybe maybe he'll pop it out situationally, but he's so good with Genji that it's much more likely we're going to see that much more of the time, especially in a, in a matchup like here. They, they can't really afford to mess around, right? We did just witness Misfits actually picking up their successful win, John. Mm. Um, you, however, ha had the rather strong opinion that it was not uh, as easy and as clear cut for Misfits as it could have been. Creation putting up a good fight over on towards Kings Row, which is our first yes. map in this best of five. I should highlight as well, a best of five grand final. So that does mean that the, there is uh, more margin for error for these teams. They can make a few more mistakes and slip ups. What was it exactly do you think the Misfits could have done better on Kings Row? Because that is our first map. So I think uh, Misfits, out of all the teams that we've cast yesterday and today, are the team where the way the team has gelled together and the way that they've been shot calling in these team fights has been great. What they found on Kings Row against Creation Esports was that, sorry, on Nepal rather, was that even when the t uh, when the fight was broken out and it wasn't just one team completely hauling up in a single place, everyone's going on one-on-ones, two-on-twos everywhere, Misfits were still able to get the upper hand, first coffee of the day, etc. They're not going to find that with Anox, though. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned because I do think that Cypher has the opportunity once again to uh, potentially lift the team to victory here. I think that a lot of people looking in prior to this tournament would have said, Anox are there or thereabouts, and they're going to be really good, but at what point will their teamwork uh, amplify their individual capabilities? Turns out that was yesterday. So uh, Misfits have a lot on their plate right now. And I think that is a storyline that we need, do need to kind of reiterate. You, the chances are we've got some first-time or newer viewers um, to Overwatch, and the story goes that, you know, Enox haven't been on our radar for too long. I mean, they've been playing, they've been competing, they haven't been finding too much success. You look at the rankings, they're nowhere to be seen in comparison to the likes of the teams that they have already dispatched of. Yep. They remove Reunited, they remove Rogue, they have an efficiency for beating, beating teams beginning with R. Uh, but all round, you know, that's rank three, rank seven. These are big names that they have and convincingly beaten. Now, I don't know whether I should start the discussion suggesting that this patch favors them. Uh, I think that's maybe a, d a debate worth having, considering just fresh off of this patch, suddenly they're in a grand final and their opportunity to get to the playoffs. Certainly favours Cypher. Sure. I think we can say that much. That's fair enough. <laughs> well, any good Genji well. player. Yes. I think. Oh, and where is this? Where is the uh, the rise of Genji come from from this patch? You've talked about it before. I do want to make sure we reiterate that, though. So a lot of what makes Genji great in this patch is uh, the reintroduction of Zenyatta as a very strong support. So that combination... What do you call, it? What do you call the combination, John? It's Zenji, <laughs> not Genyatta. Although there is a little bit of room for debate. I like Zenji, it sounds good. But the thing about that is it makes a lot of the heroes that previously would have been employed to take out Zenyatta, to take out Genji, 
a little bit less playable. You don't see many Soldier 76s because Divas have come into prominence and you don't really need uh, the healing from Soldier 76 if you have the Defense Matrix from Diva, for example. Farah is very difficult to play in the current meta because McCree's have shot to prominence, and when uh, Zenyatta is also able to take out Farah just floating around in midair while those rockets are being fired, she becomes a lot less playable. These are a lot of the heroes that traditionally you would task with taking out the Genjis, would task with taking out the Zenyatas, and that combined with Widowmaker falling out of favor has all of a sudden meant in the natural order of things, rather than Genji being buffed to high heaven, far from it, it's just that a lot of the natural predators have suddenly disappeared. Yeah, and actually, that's a predator I wanted to address while we do seem to have some time. The loss of Widowmaker. We've seen, have we seen? I mean, I don't think we've seen one Widowmaker in play. Maybe cropped up once for a moment. It actually surprises me because originally, obviously, before this patch, I was we thinking, were. I was trying to think, how, how, do they, how do they create a situation where we, we'll have this, where Widowmaker's not useful? Because, I mean, the war hack in of itself is, is obviously very, very powerful. But actually, at that point, generally speaking, how teams are actually playing when they're all grouping up together, I can see you know the war hack would not be nearly as useful and with the, the problem with the damage and so on. And again, talking about the kind of natural ecosystem and you know having you know, no Faris in play and so on, you don't need the Widowmaker as much. You know, Widowmaker would obviously be a great counter to any Faris, you know, flying around in Mercies as well. We're not really seeing any Mercies uh, played as well due to the fact that you're, you're talking about Zenyatta is, is going to be able to do the job much better, generally speaking. I mean, the reses are useful here and there, but Zenyatta is across the board a bit more useful at the moment. It feels like it's a very risky play mm. to go with Mercies at the moment. There's no doubt that in big team fights, a massive res and being able to take the fight to the opposing team a second time is incredibly powerful. Is it powerful enough uh, for a team to risk not... P oh, well, Zenyatta will be picked anyway, but maybe not picking a Lucio. Uh, or maybe not picking up an off-tank, for example. These are the decisions that teams are coming to. It's not that Mercy has suddenly become rubbish. In fact, there may well be isolated incidents of a res winning a team a fight and winning them a map as well, but it is very situational now. I mean, we've seen, I mean, I can just uh, count on at least one hand instances where a four or five man res was, would have been possible. There's one man left. It's a support. It's a Lucio. You know, like we've seen situations yeah. where the, these big team downs, if there's a mercy, we could have seen a completely different s state of play. Uh, however, it's never a guarantee that that would have that entire you know, progress would have gone down had there been a different uh, hero in play. You've also got those team compositions like, let's highlight Route 66, triple support, one tank. Okay, maybe that's not the perfect example because you had so much uh, power in the supports without Mercy, but if you're in a situation where one player is really pivotal to the team, you don't mind using a two-man res to make sure that the team fight can continue with that person at the center of the mm -hmm. fight. You lose that ability and you lose that flexibility when you don't pick a Mercy as well. And it's interesting, just to highlight, you know, these these three supports we were talking about, it was, a, they had an Ana, a Zenyatta, and a Lucio, right? Yep. Yeah, so that was this, this triple support, which we saw from Rogue, actually, a team that were knocked out. But it was something that we don't see too often. It did find a lot of success, and I do like that we're already seeing people kind of innovate. Is there anything, Dan, that you, you want to see more of, you'd like to see crop up a little bit? I mean, we're almost ready to load in. King's Row is about to go down. I I would like the the rat to come back actually. Oh, yes. you are. <laughs> I did see some fun stuff from Seagull. There is obviously some application here or there. Things that you know not always going to be that useful these days. But but yeah, more Junkrat is actually pretty fun if you get a player that's very smart with it. Obviously, it can be quite hit or miss in some in some spots, especially if they're able to jump on top of you. But you know, good uh, Junkrat players are fun to watch. But beyond that kind of novelty, I can't really think anything right now. I'm actually pretty happy where things are going. Yeah, and it is just constantly changing and evolving. The map is about to start though, and so I'll pass this over to you guys in just a moment. King's Row going down between Anox and Misfits. I just want to know your predictions. Uh, just for this map, King's Row, you've seen Misfits on it recently and they looked a little wobbly in your eyes, John. So I'll, I'll start with you. What are you thinking? I think this is a place where there are a reasonable number of places to flank. I feel like Cypher is going to want to come out with a statement of intent. I think both teams will complete the map, but I think Anox will do it faster. They did have a, a kind of wind beneath their wings when they were playing this beforehand. They do. It, it seems like they just make a lot of progress without too much uh, too much sweat on their brow. And when we saw Anox on this map before, I do want to highlight, we also saw an absence of Reinhardt on the attack, and they did it very, very effectively. Dan, your prediction, and I'll pass it over to you guys. It's none other than DDK and Jerosa. Yeah, For me as well, um, uh, it'd probably be a bit ridiculous if at this point, I don't, you know, say Anox are going to win, just, but that would be going with my heart, right? Uh, going with my, my brain. I actually, actually do feel like it's going to be very close. Both teams showing some similar uh, play style, you know, moving in at least to the first point. So I, I feel like the team that takes the first point uh, with the most success is actually going to uh, be able to take this one. 
So I'll have to see how quickly that will be, be happening. As we saw how potent it is once the team is able to deflect that immediate Winston push. And you can see Anak is on the Winston. And we're waiting for the jump now to... Or rather, sorry, Anak's are on the de defense, first of all. And there's actually no Winston on Misfits this time around. No, and uh, they are on the point very, very quickly indeed. Uh, Skipjack is going to be on his Reinhardt as they desperately try and grab it uh, very, very quickly. They want to do it in sub one minute if they possibly can, but it's only Zapre and Skipjack currently alive on Misfits. So Anox able to hold it off uh, to start things off. And a Sharik, of course, the opposing Reinhardt to uh, basically get the first team wipe here. Yeah, and I'm very curious uh, the impact that uh, Rubicon is going to have with that Zenyatta we saw uh, for Misfits actually in a defensive in this in that defensive position on the first point that uh, Zenyatta is very very powerful combined with McCree and that's what we see from Kensi and we are going to be seeing now as well Misfits trying to get themselves in there on top of the point again looking for round two and Cypher will get speed boosted around the back finding a good timing here trying to cause some disruption again that combination with Anik has proven absolutely fantastic isolating players and getting the frags that they need but there are still three players to deal with on the Point. He's going to pull out the deal with them, and it is working fantastically well. Oh man, the Cypher statement of intent, it is alive and well. Getting the triple kill, Zapre, Skipjack, and Soon all going down to the blade there. Nevix uh, once again playing Anna, and actually been playing Anna with a good amount of success so far in this tournament. But he's going to have to step it up to take the first point here. At the moment, Anox are trying to entirely stop Misfits. It's too early to tell, still over two minutes left to go here, but right now, the delay is real. Oh yes, it is actually a very nice start for Anox, and they have three ultimates to go to. Uh, of course, uh, that's going to be very painful for Misfits to deal with. At the moment, they've only got Anna's ultimate, but that might be enough. Are they going to choose to use it here without combining with anybody else's? There it is, it's going to be dropped, and let's see if that's going to be enough to deal with this push. We have a lot of kills coming in for both sides now. Trace, the Transcendence has popped as well for the Anox side. Let's see if that's going to be able to help them on the defenses. So far, it's actually looking pretty, pretty good for them. Oh, and it looks like <laughs> Rubicon and Nevix, the battle of supports, they will take each other out there as uh, the rest of the teams still stay around. Now, Rubicon not being able to charge the ultimate up is actually quite crucial for Anox. He's got quite a long way to come back from spawn as well. So it does affect Anox a little bit more than Misfits here, who have got three ultimates available. In fact, either side uh, have the same number. High Noon starting out to initiate the engagement. There goes the Graviton Surge. We're trying to get stuff done. And it looks like three kills in a trow coming out from Anox there. So once again, Misfits getting battled back. Crew on Zion not able to make, unfortunately, the ultimate count. And uh, Misfits are going to have to regroup once again. Yeah, this is, again, a very tough situation once Anox have those ultimates rolling in. They always seem to have a, a couple more to, to go to, to, to you know, muster a defense here. That Graviton Surge did delay uh, Anox from regrouping onto the point, but generally speaking, they are looking quite solid. Another push comes in now for Misfits. They've got Skipjack in there. He does have an Earth Shatter as well, but look at this. Kenshi's over the top there. The triple oh, kill coming in with the dead eye, and that is another big problem. He's not done just yet. The flashbang trying to follow up onto Skipjack. He's going to try and retreat, and there you go. The staggered respawn coming in for Misfits. This I was not expecting. I'm, uh, I am a big believer in the teamwork of Misfits, and right now they're a little bit misfiring, unfortunately, as Anox are getting <laughs> getting their way into potentially doing a full hold. 20 seconds left to go for Misfits to come and force something out here in overtime. And Cypher's been very good at building charge, just always having, seemingly, a Dragon Blade to unsheath. And uh, once again, he'll be able to find a great engagement here, although that said, he's going to get stuck in there, I think, maybe by the Graviton Surge, able to shift out of it, though, and get free reign. There is a sound barrier on them, but there's just too many players here surviving for Anox, and that is just easy pickings. Anox with a fantastic defense overall. Wow. Did not expect it to go quite like that. No, I really didn't. That is a full hold on the first point of King's Row for Anox. I thought, I mean, my prediction was that they would edge out Misfits and both teams would complete. I am about to be very wrong on the details of how this could happen. Now, of course, Misfits can bring it all back. They can also hold Anox. And in that scenario, I'm not 100% certain uh, what the tie break would be. We haven't had one of those situations yet, though. And this, oh, Kenzie, from up above, that's the second uh, triple kill that we saw from a dead eye on this first point. Anox, I don't really think an individual player shined above the rest. I think all of them were getting kills in. Oh, absolutely. And as you say, you know, we have 
I mean, the, the Annex Cypher combo is fantastic. And also the space that that push gives Kensi to just rain damage in and combining with Zenyatta uh, to just really just DPS down the attackers seems to be very hard to deal with there in that first half for uh, for Misfits. And if this if this combo keeps on shining through for for Anox, I'm well, I'm just I'm just loving the gameplay that they have with that combo. So it's gonna be very fun to see now how they are gonna do on the attack. If they can just break the point, of course that's gonna uh, net them the first win straight away. And of course we already know what their strategy is. They want to just take it straight away, get Anik just leaping in there, dropping the barrier, and then trying to go for the immediate take. Although they have a lot of time to work with, do you feel like that's gonna be the, the same sort of <laughs> the same Kenzie. sort of play. Uh, I think I think it very well could be. Sorry, I think uh, Kenzie may be channeling his inner exorcist there. I have to say, with that spray paint graphic, it's uh, it's interesting to see how Sharik is going to be doing because he was very effective as Reinhardt in the first half of the map. He's moving over to Zarya. I like this. Note, by the way, uh, that this could also signal a very very quick push from Anox. If they're able to take this point in the first minute of this, that would end up being disgusting. The map has it now. A relatively stable composition coming out from Misfits. Crew once again playing Zarya. Nevix on Lucio, and here comes the collapse. Can Anox actually do this with the first team fight? Yeah, this is the play that they went for previously. It went so well for them. And it's very key that they make this work before the ultimates are built by Misfits. And so far, it's not looking too shabby. Kills going both ways at the moment. Crew with a lot of charge doing so much damage. Somebody needs to deal with them. The Discord Orb is on him, and he will eventually be taken down by Kensi. And Kensi's going to be key here. But soon, also, with his McCree coming in from the side. And that's going to be a fantastic cleanup in the end. Looks very dangerous for a while. But that said, Anix not done. He's straight in the mix again. Yeah, exactly right. Anix at the end of the day have much uh, have a much shorter distance to come in and retake the points so they'll be eager to rush out of this spawn points as quickly as possible and recontest here and the misfits have to make sure that doesn't happen if that spawn point by the way uh, sorry if the capture point goes over one third it will stay there so that charge will actually build on it very very important for misfits to prevent that from happening to prevent the momentum here comes all of the ultimates rubicon with transcendence coming in back transcendence on both sides and we've also got the high noon soon taking out rubicon zephray going to help and take out Anak as well. That's a big, big tank gone on the side of Anak. Misfits should be able to hold again, but they have to do this for another two and a half minutes. It is quite a tall order, but the thing that will be going in their favor now is that they are starting to build those ultimates. They've got a sound barrier to go to. They've got a death blossom on Zaprey. We saw amazing stuff from him in, uh, previous in the tournament uh, with, that, with the death blossoms, with Reaper in general. So I'm feeling more confident about Misfits' ability, but that said, Anix straight in there again. Rinse and repeat. Cypher, sound buried up. He's got himself the Dragon Blade as well. The Graviton Surge is coming in. Absolute madness and all the kills going towards Misfits. Beautiful Graviton Surge there and the finishing blows from Crew. Full charge with the Zarya. Seemingly too much to deal with for Anox. Wow, this is a great story as well. Anox coming out here with a statement of intent, completely denying Misfits even the first point. Misfits now coming back doing exactly the same thing. They're not done yet though. They've got a minute 45 left to go. Can they continue to hold on? Okay, look, looks like we've got a high noon here from soon looking to just clear some space. That's a really smart move as well to get his teammates back into some positions they can work from. Uh, but where is Anik going to come from? I was wondering. He finally gets spotted. Oh, nice straight headshot there. But a Graviton Surge coming in. Kenzie oh, gets himself three there in that Graviton Surge. That is beautiful work again coming in from Anox. This is going to be pretty hard to come back from. And we see a last few Misfits players trying desperately. Zapre is in the mix there, trying to get it done. Soon is going to switch to the Tracer to get himself back onto the point ASAP to make sure that they can hold. But right now, Anox are looking like they're about to take it away. That was uh, again coming down to an individual moment. We were talking about those from Anox, but it didn't come from Cyber. It came from Kenzi there, the triple kill from McCree. Oh, and four more kills coming out from Anox as well, as if to seal the deal. There we go. Capture point A is taken. And after a fantastic defense where it looked like both holds were possible. Uh, Anox will be able to capture the first point and as a result take King's Row away from Misfits. That was actually awesome to watch. Even though we only got to see the first point uh, battle from both teams, just seeing the level of individual ability from both of these sides, you know, making the difference in that way was fantastic. And look at this just madness here from Sharik. 
very active, constantly all over the place with his Reinhardt. He wasn't stationary. He wasn't just shielding his teammates. Uh, he was looking for opportunities to deal the damage. And especially when you have a large team gathered up around uh, abilities like Transcendence, it allows Earthshatter to be that much more powerful. Cypher, as you can see, he had his fair share of moments to grab um, a couple of kills with the sword, but he wasn't quite able to close the deal in terms of those triple kills, those quad kills that we were seeing previously. That highlight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was very, very well done from Anox, and it's over time, I'm speaking about Anox less in a collection of individual players yep. and more in the way the team is working Absolutely. together. And that was always going to be the scary thing that Misfits had to watch out for coming into the final. If they wanted confirmation that they're the real deal, that's it. It does look like the boot camp has been working out, but it is time for a quick little break before we get into the next map, guys. So stay with us. This is an awesome grand final so far. I cannot wait for the next map. I'm sure you feel the same way. We'll see you very shortly for that. <laughs> 